Hey, kitty girls, it's Sunday, June 5th, 2022, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race All-Stars Season 7, this little thing we do called uh, podcast here, um, and welcome back, because it's been a couple weeks, yeah. but we're here, and we're glad you're here. For those of you that are just joining us, hi, welcome. My name's Gary, and with me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome, welcome. And we are going to discuss episodes three and four of All Star Season Seven, aka I gotta scroll to find the top because I never remember it. The realness of Fortune Ball. That's a mouthful. Mm-hmm. And Fairy Tale Justice. Yeah. Um, and I'm just gonna say right out the gate before we get into our first section. This might be one of the best seasons of the seasons. Okay, so of the series, yeah. So let me, um, since we're gonna, since you dropped that little bomb, um, <laughs> let's 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 talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. Okay. Okay. Um, I completely agree. Okay. This has been a very fun, like four episodes, and not just because. You know, there's not, you know, and it is because I think because there's not really like, quote unquote, drama, there's nothing driving, there's no elimination, there's no worry. Mm. So one, we know all these girls in some way, shape or form. Right. The Vivian for us may be an exception because we I don't think you, neither you nor I watched the UK season. Um, but we know that they're winners. That's the second one. So these girls, through you know their years, are less or so. You, I will say a few years at most, mm -hmm. uh, or at least, excuse me, um, have risen to the challenge, won a season or whatever, an all stars or you know won something, and there is a caliber I think that we are expecting, mm. and we're getting it. It's not like they threw a bunch of people, a bunch of queens in this in this race, and you know, there's very we know we've we've been doing this for a while. Y'all know this shit. Every season, like if you think about the regular seasons, not everybody's that great. Like we, you just know that that's the way it is, and that's the way it is. That's how a competition works. Some people have brought their caliber. Some have not, you know been not been able to reach that level, what have you. But when I think of an all stars. I immediately go, okay, these girls have been around. They know the game, so I expect them to know what's coming to them. Mm -hmm. And then you add, okay, winners, then these girls have been risen to the occasion and then some and gone on to win. So I expect excellence. And we are getting it. <laughs> I, I would say, uh, for the most part, I, w I would say yeah. we're 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 in a A grade classification, mm -hmm. ninety to ninety three plus percent like yeah. performance, like like meeting expectation. I agree with you. I think there, there's a lot of things that have happened. I think they've brought the. I think they've are all for the most part bringing the charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent. I also think they are bringing the coin. Yeah. And they Absolutely. are bringing the I think of all the times they are truly bringing the the camaraderie sisterhood mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. to the forefront in a like in a really validating like yeah. uh, mature reassuring like way uh, amongst each other. What I what I'm really appreciating and I'm just going to say this right now uh let me what am I looking for? I'm looking for this one. <laughs> if you have not been watching Untucked, it is also on Paramount Plus. If you're watching it on Paramount Plus, uh, you've got to watch Untucked. And the reason why is because Untucked is just as good, I think, as the main episode, mm -hmm. in that it is just the girls and a kiki, and mm -hmm. they are on the couch or standing and sitting around. Um, the judges have been coming back and talking to them, and they are really just it, it's kind of like what i imagine the backstage is like when they are these veterans who know mm -hmm. what they're doing and everything 
is in place and, you know, and good to go. And they're just having a drink, having a beverage and, yeah. you know, and chatting. And I, oh, it, it's just so appreciative because there's no real angst. Yeah. Now, I will say that there has been a little bit of drama, but mama, like the drama yeah. is so minimal and it cracks my ass up because some people are like, I think, creating their own drama. Yeah. And they're not realizing it right now. And I'm, I'm sure yeah. we might talk about that more later, but it just yeah. it cracks my ass up because I was kind of like, and I I, like, okay, girl. Yeah. <laughs> You're kind of hitting a point for me. I, I I think that this is a season and maybe that's why it's so good. Mm. Um, There's no fear of going home. Right. Like, I mean, that is the one thing I think they've said in every Untucked so far is nobody is going home. And that makes all the difference in their mindset and their emotions and their psychology, like their makeup of how they're handling Mm -hmm. things. Because I think that is giving them more liberty to feel empowered, but also like comfortable in what they're committing and what they're presenting. Now, I do want to say this. I think there might be some heavy handed criticism that's due to this season because I have not really seen hardly any criticism from the judges. And that Mm. part is annoying me because I'm like, I get it. They're winners and they're not here to be berated and, and beat up Mm. and treated like shit. But at the same time, honey, a, a, a critique is a critique is a critique. They should all be able to handle it. Yeah, and I I, I, I I hear you. Um, I do think I I know when in the past, and we've seen this happen before, like when we get to like top four or top five or wherever we're at with the season, and you're getting and you're at that episode and you're listening to the judges, they're almost always like, Oh my god, you're so great. This was so wonderful. I can't believe you did this. I'm so proud of you. You've gone so far, you've come so far, and blah, 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 blah. And it's very it's very positive affirmation, blah, 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 bullshit. Right. Um, and in the like in the finales in and of themselves, it's usually like, oh, we love you. like when the judges were there, they weren't there in this last one. But like when the judges are there, it's kind of like, oh my god, we love you. No, no, no. It's like, okay, that's cool. Um, but like here in this moment, I want something more. Right. And what I don't know is happening. So I'm going to say this: we we might be able to blame it on the edit. Because I'm wondering if the judges are giving any feedback for improvement or areas of opportunity, and it's just not making the cut. And Mm -hmm. all we're seeing is the accolades, the affirmations, the the atta girls, like, you know. Mm -hmm. And and that's bothersome to me because I'm like, these are human beings. They're not beyond reproach. Like, you can't – like, sure, you're being nice, but there's a part of me that's like – there's a certain point where I don't want you to be nice and I don't want you to be mean. I want you yeah. to be authentic. I want you to be real yeah. and say this, this, and this, eh, not so much. Right. Like, I'm not really sure about this. You know what I mean? Like, like I think there are ways to kind of discuss certain things um, and how, you, how it gets presented, what it does. But yeah. So anyways, just to, as a generality, I've been enjoying the season. I'm, I'm sort of disappointed that we're now a third of the way through the season and we're going to have only eight more episodes and then it's going to be over. Um, and we can talk about it another time as to what that means when the next all stars comes around, what it will mm. be like. Um, Fair. Because I think they changed the game. And if they're making a new model and they're going to do it on all winners, like in another, I presuming three to four years to get some yeah. distance. Um, Got it. So then, then right. Then we'll have, presumably a similar kind of concept or, or layout, but they have definitely been shaking some things up and, and going and trying different things mm-hmm. or like, you know, or going back as we'll discuss in this episode and repeating something they've done before, but putting a twist on it and seeing mm-hmm. how well the, the girls do with it. And I think that, yeah. they're, that they're, they're, they're rising to the occasion. Yeah. So, well, so with that, are you ready to get into the first Topic yeah. area, now that, now that we've kind of had a general intro discussion about the show. <laughs> Racers, start your engines, and may the best drag queen win. Shit, I keep forgetting to change that. Um, <laughs> may the best legend win. Um, uh, yeah, so put the pedal to the metal. Uh, this is us discussing our, just our overall thoughts about these two episodes, number three and four. Mm-hmm. Any serves, swerves, or nerves. If you're not familiar, uh, serves are things that we think that people did really, really well. Uh, the swerves are the things that you're just kind of like, girl. 
And then you've got nerve, which can be both positive and or negative. Like it took a lot of nerve to do that. And like, like, you know, yes, mm. queen. Um, or what the hell you think you're doing? Oh, wait, I think I got one for that. What the fuck you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> true. True, 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 true. Yes, 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 yes. All right. So, David, uh, what are uh, your first thoughts about these episodes? So, um, I kind of gave a lot of thoughts, but these episodes I think were really good, but these were also, I feel, kind of like filler. I didn't put that down, but I did want to kind of put that, mm. you know, a little bit. These are very classic talents, but they're also... It was rather interesting. I just, I just feel, you know, good, but like, eh, about them. I was enjoying the show, but it, it was, it's, it was a very. We had these great first two episodes, mm -hmm. and then here we are, kind of starting into the meat of it. And I feel like we had a really great start, and we're kind of, okay, here we are. Here's, here's. So you got the filet mignon. Mm. Here's your side. Like, while it's probably a good side, probably tasty. Right. It's just not like it didn't fill me up. I'll put it like that. Interesting. Yeah, I, I can understand. Like, I see it, I guess, in a way that we've, like, plateaued. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Snatch Game was just yeah. Yeah, exactly. so good. And that is difficult. Like, once you really kind of hit it on something, it can be difficult to maintain that. Um as yeah. we saw with Jinx. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> if you've already seen these episodes and you know what we're talking about. Um, yeah. But no, I mean, it, it is, it's a, it's an interesting position to be in, to be like, okay. And that, and so this is the way I think of it. I feel like we had episode one and then we went up with episode two. I think we went down a little with episode three and I think we came back up a little bit with episode four. So yeah. it's kind of, I feel like I'm on a bit of an amusement park ride where it's kind of yeah. like, you know and so like like the second go. like this right so the the first episode was like the little bump you get on the, the roller coaster ride yeah and then the second one was like a big one and then the third one was like smaller but the fourth one was a little bigger so I, i'm hoping later in the season we have like one of the the, the big big you know kind of yeah. thrill or whatever i don't know what that's yeah. gonna be but i don't either we'll but i do have a few serves mm -hmm. to give um, so my first one, um, is to Raja in her gold, mm. that mm -hmm. outfit, that was spectacular. And the fact that she had the same amount of time that Jinx, um, <laughs> to make that outfit, she was using, it, it looked like she was using like like tubes from the fabric and um, mm -hmm. reams and, and wire and whatever to kind of make this like volum voluminous, mm -hmm. volum yeah, voluminous, that a voluminous, like gold, um, like moment. I was, I was, I was living. I loved it. I loved it. I love that Raja tends to uh, respectfully, you know, she knows she's older. Mm -hmm. um, and she's, you know, she's using, I don't want to say she's showing her age, but by showing her age, meaning like she tends to do like the silver hairs, the gray hair. Um, and it's just very, it's very nice to see. So I'm kind of, I'm enjoying that. Mm -hmm. uh, second serve um, on that same challenge was um, Miss um, Jada in red. Mm-hmm. This bag lady in or bag lady in red, I think was the the mm -hmm. because this was the before and after category. This bag lady in red outfit came out and I my 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 draw hit the, my jaw hit the floor. It was so good and so funny and so like it was campy but glamorous. Mm -hmm. It was smart. Like there were there were there were bags. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this was made exclusively from bags. I'm assuming not. But like there were areas there were actually bags that she zipped open and pulled shit out of. There were you know it's just so smart and great thought and it's 
it was just exquisite, exquisite. I loved it. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Loved, it loved it. And then finally, to kind of bring into the most recent episode, I wrote down the many voices of the Vivian. Um, I, again, like we talked about before, I don't know the Vivian a lot. I did watch the, her best of um, when it came out on the YouTubes. Um, so I kind of got a good little glimpse, but I didn't see her throughout the whole season. Um, but I was so happy with what I got, we got there. I was, I was, it was, it was funny. I was laughing. I love the like sudden change again. She went from a kind of Scottishy accent to a more German ish accent to kind of a, Bavarian moment and then went into this American-esque moment at the end. Mm -hmm. It just kind of just, and it just kept going. She was great with the improv. She, 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 the thing I, if you, I think I've listened to in Untucked, she kind of said something along the lines of like, she kind of had a character that she was like, improv is just and. You always kind of had to add on to it. But she was also supposed to be a liar. So you can't really yes and with lies. You kind of can. but So you kind of switch it around a little bit and you kind of created something on the fly in the moment. Mm-hmm. And it worked so well. I mean, she obviously didn't create these in the moment because of the she had props. But the moment that caught me the most was she went to, to Hansel and Gretel Mm-hmm. She said she was both Hansel and Gretel. And then she reached into the fucking basket and threw out some breadcrumbs. I was just... <laughs> what the fuck? She was eating the breadcrumbs too. And it just, like, it just all just, it, it, it was, it was, it was just great. It was comedy gold. Yeah. Um, or, well, I will give it actually comedy silver. I have comedy gold, but I will talk about that later. Oh, Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. Uh but yeah, these these things about so I think were were like I call it filler, but they were still entertaining. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. This was like uh, if you're a Broadway queen like me, this is one of those like pop culture musicals that are fluffy and fun to listen to, but you might not remember every song once the show is done. That's fair. You might get you like you like it. You're like bopping along. You're really enjoying what's going on the stage. Nothing is bad. It's just like, okay, cool. And then, you know, if someone asks you how the show was, or if there was anything favorite, you might be like, oh, well, there was this, but you may not know where it fell in sequence with the rest of everything going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Hmm. So, what about you? Um, well, I got a little bit of everything. Yeah. So I want to give a serve to production for the game show Spin. Mm-hmm. Let me explain, because I'm sure some people are kind of like, what? Um, so, and it kind of goes all over the place. What I'm giving the serve for is the whole episode of taking something unexpected, like America's favorite game, without actually using the name Wheel of Fortune, <laughs> because... Mm-hmm. Apparently, that costs money. Um, Mm. So they didn't do that. But then they make it a ball. And then we have the the queens to play game, which apparently went longer than production expected (laughs) with guessing the letters to get Vanna White realness. Or Vanna White Party. Vanna White Party, that's right. Um, Which turns into the Vanna White realness, which is the first uh walking category on the mm-hmm. runway mm-hmm. um like and then of course the gag and this is the part i loved is the queen's oh. reactions walking out on the runway to the the actual real life vanna white being standing there off stage right watching them walk um yeah. and i'm so happy that jinx went first and her reaction was to laugh 
uh-huh. like, at the absurdity because immediately yeah. she was like, "Of course, Vanna White is here." Like, right? Like, why would she not be here? You know, what were we thinking? And the queens, I think the queens must have known something was up, but they weren't really giving it away because they walked out one by one by one. And usually, I think they're just backstage, but I think they isolated them to mm. keep them from telling each other about Vanna being out there. It's possible. Because they really all seemed to have a genuine, like, yeah reaction when they turned and looked. Um, exactly. So to our knowledge, we'll put it like that. Right. It looked like there was genuine, like, shock and like, oh, hey. And it could be one of two things. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm assuming, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm assuming all of the reactions were probably in the first take. Correct. Right? Because we know they do it twice. Mm-hmm. So more than likely, they walked around, they turned the corner, step out on the stage, and then, oh, there's Vanna White. Mm-hmm. And it's that instant reaction. So we're going to get that. And then, you know, they run one, walk the runway, and then they probably do it again. And um, I just would have been like, I can see, I can see it, at least to my, it, it seemed genuine to me. Now, we also know that these are, you know, all stars, all winners, legends, legendaries, whatever. So it's entirely possible that um, it was staged. I don't think so, mm-hmm. but it is possible. And the girls just maybe were able to pass it off really well. Right. No, so I, I wanted to give a serve for that game show spin because I thought that was fun. Um, I do have some swerves. Uh-oh. Okay. I got, I got three topic Uh-oh. areas. One of them is Spikes. I'm interested to know what the prompt was Mm -hmm. because some of the queens were spot on and some of them, mm, not so much. That was a choice. That was a choice. So I'm going to be brave yet controversial and I'm going to make a comment. I think Uh a lot of people really liked a certain queen's look and I was like, "Eh." and that would be Evie Oddly. Fair. I just didn't see so, it as spiky. Like, so I will. I okay, okay. So I was one of the people that kind of liked it. So I, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna I don't hate it. it. Yeah, yeah. But I can see where you're coming from because I want you. To, I want to go backwards, <laughs> like not not like look at it, like go at it and then take another look at it. And I want you to think about it in the perspective of. Everything else that's going on, and and no offense, we've talked about this. These are all stars, all winners, got the coin. Mm-hmm. And looking at this outfit, like it took me a second because I actually marked it because I really kind of liked it. And then I was watching some of the episodes of like I watched um, Pit Stop and what have you, and I kind of watched it a couple of times going down, and I realized this is kind of basic AF. That. Like with the that. exception of that. The, with the exception of the like um like props that she's using to like be like this like insecty kind of thing and the fact that she's on she's on point with these shoes that she's wearing. I mean, it's a green leotard with some spikes in the back and a corset in the middle that kind of has a protrusion down to down to kind of give the little bit of a spike. It's not giving me what I think it was supposed to, which was sort of more insect, I think, you know, mantis, what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that was what she was going for. I don't know. But that's kind of what I was what I was perceiving it as. Right. But looking at it, I'm kind of I, you know, I again I said I've looked at it a few times. I was kind of like, hmm. I feel like we've been talking about Caliber. Mm -hmm. If this had shown up on a regular season runway, I would have been like, ah, go for it. Do that thing. That sounds so fun. Looks fun. Whatever the category may have been. Like they're, you know, but I wanted more. Right. And, and that was the thing for me is I felt like 
in a regular season, this probably would have been a top contender to win the runway, depending on what the category is. But that's the part where I'm like, I'm not quite sure what the queens were given as as their prompt because, mm. okay, so I'm going to select another queen, Jinx. I, li- I really do like Jinx's outfit. I thought it was well executed. She's the only one that, that went a porcupine route, though, like as everyone kept talking about, like it was very like prickly, like sp- like but spiky in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, I think it would be fair to criticize her as well and say, eh, I'm not quite sure if it really beats the prompt, but we don't know. Was the prompt prickly? Was the prompt on point? Like lots of points. Like, I, I don't know what they were given mm. because some of them seem to absolutely knock it out of the park and others not so much. So, and I will say this, if people have been paying attention to social media, you may have seen that Shay came forward and basically kind of put World of Wonder on blast mm-hmm. indirectly and saying that production told her in preparation for the season that when they did the before and after, they could not use names of celebrities. Mm-hmm. And yet she is the only queen who didn't. Everybody else pretty much did. And she kind of commented, like, imagine my surprise when everybody else is basically doing it and I'm not. Mm-hmm. And so there's been some some discussions in the social media spheres about the fact that it was done intentionally to hold Shay back to keep her from running away with the entire season, <laughs> like winning everything. And I'm like, well, I mean, <laughs> fact. like that, that that could very well be. But it's like, you know, I, you know what? Ooh, I want to see what she said about this after this outfit because I, I, well, I'll talk about it later, but I have some things. So I'm, I'm th- ooh, this is giving me a, mm. go ahead. So for those of you that listened to the last episode, I think David's having a moment, like I had a moment when David dropped that bomb about <laughs> Trinity. Anyways, go back and listen to, to the first episode. You'll know what I'm talking about. So yeah, Ooh, so th- that's shit. an example of like, you know, where I'm kind of wondering if like they, I, I, this is what I think happens. This is what I think World of Wonder could say. And I'm not giving them excuses. Different producers talk to different queens. Di- different communications go out. Instead of it being standard execution, universal across the board, 100%. Like, you know, everybody gets the exact same information. I think someone says something and it gets interpreted differently or it's said a little different, blah, blah, blah. And that's where all this kind of, you know, possible shenanigans comes up. I'm just saying. Uh, second thing, as a swerve, ears. So, like, here's the thing is, well, and I should put a, a snout in too, but um, ears was, uh, if you watch the episode and you saw the fairy tale justice and afterwards, Jinx is standing there talking to RuPaul <laughs> and her pig ear falls off. And hits the ground and Jinx in classic improv fashion knows she has to recognize it. You cannot not say anything about the ear. And she turns around and says, you're going to have to speak up because I can only hear through one ear now. (laughs) I was like, this fucking cunt. God damn. Like, I can't with her. Like, she she is so good that she knew that that was a problem. And that's how she kind of recovered from it. But but here's the other thing. Mama, the ears on RuPaul. I hope somebody got fired for that. I hope somebody got fired for that entire look. That entire head-to-toe outfit ensemble. She looked like crap. The ears looked bad. It made her look strange. The, the vel- velvet velour tracksuit whatever business made her look like she was a little pregnant or she had like a paunch. Like I was like, what, what is, what is this? I'm like, she allowed herself to look like this. I'm like, am, are, I, am I missing the, the fun, the, the, the fuck you twist of comedy in it? I'm not, I, 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 yeah. I don't think it existed. I think it was just, I don't know if, if Rue was lazy that day and she gave no fucks. and didn't care what she looked like. I was like, Oh, who knows? Oh. I don't know. I, no, I I can't even say anything about it. It just, you know how you have one of those like like, mm, I don't know. Speaking of, we'll continue yeah. on because I'm talking about velvet. That's the third one. 
Uh, Zaldi, you need you owe Rue money back. I'm gonna say this right now. So the blue outfit, the gown that she wears on the runway for the fairy tale justice number. Mm hmm. From the waist down, it is velvet. From the waist up, I don't know what the blue main fabric is, but do you know what it is under those lights on that stage? Sheer. And I hated it. It looked bad. I was like, what is this business? And I'm pretty sure if Rue saw it after it had been recorded, she would have been annoyed and irritated as well. Did not care for it. Mm. I'm just saying. <laughs> what? Oh, no, nothing. Just I just, I, I didn't. I didn't, I don't, I, I hate to say it, I wasn't paying attention to her outfit. I just, because I, I, to be it, blunt, I'm going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I kind of sometimes don't care. Because I've gotten so, I, I, no, let me, like, I have gotten so tired mm -hmm. of some of the things that are coming down the runway for her. I'm kind of like, oh, there she goes. Yeah. That's nice. We know it doesn't stay on. So, like, we get to see it for maybe the five minutes or whatever they take to record the beginning. And then off the bottom, whatever whatever bottom it is goes. Right. It's gone. And um, I'm noticing. It, okay, I will admit, I'm probably also noticing. And I'm probably like, okay, well, there you go. So you just, like, take that there. Coo -coo -coo, it's off. And then she can hang free, I guess, or whatever who wants to do there. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, so, I mean, it was, it just, it really bothered the hell out of me. Oh, yeah. Um, and it has been said, apparently, I think Bussy Queen made a comment about it. Like, Velvet does not do well on, on that stage mm -mm. under those lights. It, it sucks in the light. It absorbs it. It doesn't really reflect it. It kind of makes it difficult. Um so it, it, you have to be a little selective with it. And like when the Vivian wore velvet, that like peach blush in the realness, color, yeah, right for the for the Vanna White realness walk. I mean, I thought she looked beautiful, but I also kind of felt like, yeah, but that looks like a park and bark. Like, like it looks just, like something where where to the club, right, 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 right. Like it's either there. it's either a pre walk around in the bar event like kind of number or after the number or you're just going to stand still in one place because you're doing a torch song ballad. Like, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? And it's not that the gown does that much that you have to stay in one place. It's just like, eh, it's a gown, you know, it's a thing. Yeah. So yeah, th there was those. Um, I want to move on to nerve. <laughs> uh, mother fucking Roger. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know, Raja <laughs> has several nicknames, and one of them happens to be Roger, which cracks my ass up to no end. Um, <laughs> but what I loved, like, so I got two nerves. Nerve to Raja for what she's bringing mm -hmm. to the runway. Mm -hmm. Yes, queen! She is practically the height of what you need to, like, be like like meeting and exceeding it's really kind of her and shay and probably trinity like at, at this caliber of stuff mm -hmm. i'm also going to say nerve to the production i don't know what y'all are doing but i've about reached by linnet let me say this i've had it officially i don't know why they're acting like raja is just there to be there like they're mm. giving her accolade or whatever but i was like no she's there she's competing why do why do i get this feeling that you're just like oh isn't it good that her old girlfriend came back yeah but she's a contestant and she's trying to win she's yeah. attempting to get a star and she's yeah. been doing so good now i will say this it is super shitty that her olivia newton john waters before and after fucked her because the mustache didn't really show mm -hmm. and you basically look like Sandy out of Greece, which mm -hmm. is which is bad. Yeah. So like 
Could have given her like an Epstein Klein bar like suit jacket to like just at least start it. Like, come on, give us something. I just, I was so like, yeah, I was so, so, so irritated. She did so well with the ball, like, you know, with the, with making the outfit mm-hmm. and this last runway. Mama, like she turned the corner and I was like, this is Raja. This is the height of like fashion, couture, like modeling and outfit that makes you pay attention. You're looking at the details. You're looking at the movement and you are like, this is money. Mm-hmm. Even if it only cost her $15 to make. I have no idea. But yeah. it looks expensive. It was so good. And um, so <laughs> I'm going to talk about it now because I couldn't remember if I saved it for later. And I got to give props to Raja. The stunt that she pulled at towards the end of the second episode when, when Rue says that the queens that all but the top two queens can oh, leave the stage. You mean just episode four, yeah. And Raja says, "Are you sure?" <laughs> and I don't think Rue caught it immediately what Raja was saying to her, because she's like, she's like, "Oh, I was, I was, exp- I was planning to stay," and everybody's kind of like, "Ha ah, ha ha ha," and I was like, <gasps> "I was like, not only did she say something, she basically talked smack back to Mother Rue and was like." I think I deserve to be here. I was expecting to get like to get a pin. I was like, oh, bitch, bitch, you go, girl, because I am in full agreement that you did so well. I would have not had a problem if it was a three way tie. You had three of them that got stars and all three of them had to lip sync for their legacy. I would have been fine with that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would have been fine with that. So I'm just saying I realized I'm biased and I'm venting because I'm pissed. Because I feel like they're just doing – production is doing something weird with her. They're sleeping on her. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. She is not there to be filler. Yeah. She is there to win. So yeah. knock yeah. that shit off. Yep. Just saying. <sighs> you ready to move on? Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, it's time for snaps and eye rolls, a.k.a. the hits and the misses, the highs and the lows of these episodes. Uh, As you can imagine, I already had a low. (laughs) I was just venting about, but um, mm. anyways, that being said, (laughs) will I cool off? David, what were your (laughs) thoughts? What were you giving snaps to? There you go. Let me give you the fan. There you go. Cool down. Um, I am giving, like we kind of talked about it, touch pointed it earlier, but I'm I'm giving snaps for improv at Jinx's. Um, I have never laughed. No, that's not, I'm sure. I I was laughing so fucking hard while Jinx was on every time. Jinx knows exactly what she's doing. Theater is her, in her background. Mm -hmm. I, I can, I just could tell she was so amazing. Right. Like from, from entrance to exit okay so let's talk about the door that malfunctions right that shit i don't know if any other queen would have caught that and then reacted the way she did right in this like kind of vapid stupid yeah just non-verbal body positioning where she spins around Closes the door, realizes it doesn't close a second time, spins around again, and yeah. pulls the door shut. Because oh, it's just a prop paper door. Like, it doesn't do anything. Oh, my God. Uh, it may not have been paper, but it was, it was at least a prop. But again, from everything that, she, that kind of went on, she is the queen of yes and. Mm. Um, absolutely. And her just seeing... Her, her, like keeping the whole like big bad wolf thing going. She lied about being, you know, with him, and like, oh, I didn't, I didn't count it because it was anal. Like, come on, like, <laughs> like, girl, and 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 then at the end, with the ear, 
I had to stop. Jim and I were watching the episode, and I had to stop it because I was I died, <laughs> could not like laughing so hard, tears running coming out the eyes, that kind of laughing, because it just was I don't know if I, it hit me in like that right there in that like spot mm-hmm. of just it's an oh shit moment. And she just rolled with it. Right. Like, like she was bringing the height and the caliber, the energy of whose line is it anyway? Right. If you've ever watched that television show, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, (laughs) go look it up online. There is a television show. They're actually on tour right now. They're coming uh, to my hometown to a local theater, uh, to our like show case kind of theater. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. And you can buy tickets to go see it. And I'm kind of interested but I feel mm. bad because it's not all the cast members that I really want to see. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> but but it, but it, but that show was an improv show, and Drew Carey hosted it for many many years, and then Aisha Tyler uh, has done it, and so you know Wayne Brady was on it, like you know, um, yeah. and the other you know comedian actors are failing me, but like it was so amazing to watch them do all these various kind of skits, which is basically just what improv shows are, and oh the the amount of like quick witted yeah. like mm-hmm. razor sharp ability to do those things and i totally yeah. agree that jinx like was yeah was like it. like we talked about her and she was said to give a master class for snatch game yeah again like she this, she this really could, really excelled yeah this would fall this could fall very much into that i mean it's improv and just the the the, the moment it just it her you're gonna have to talk louder like, like I was just like died, dead. Like I was, I was done. I was. It was so great. It was so amazing. It was so funny. Oh, yeah. And watching it even now, like I watched it just like a little bit before. Um, I, I, I'm still having that same like almost you know instinctual laugh moment. Right. Um. So kudos to Jinx. Thank you for making me like tear cry laughing, laughing because it was it was fucking amazing. Agreed, agreed. <sighs> and what about you? Um, so mine's a little bit more general. I just said queens are bringing it, Mama. Like, and this mm-hmm. ties back to the beginning of the episode when we talked about how this season has been. I really feel like these eight contestants are are here. And authentically, mm. like in it, they know how this works. Um, a couple of them have had way more experience than the others because they've been around three times. Mm. Um, but like they are, they are all definitely here and interested, and you know, going through it. Um, and I just, I just so appreciate that. Um, yeah. it, you know the the moments, the mirror chat moments. Mm-hmm. Where they're like, you know, having these heartfelt emotional things, because that's what the show's nat- tragically, you know, known for. Um, the storyline kind of, you know, moments where they connect with each other. Um, Evie and Jada, uh, really, really interesting, like how they're kind of like coming together. Like they see themselves as twins almost in a way, being the most recent queens um, and their experiences. But just, yeah, like how they're they're going back and forth and the things that they're saying and how like, you know, they're being supportive of each other. And I just, I really, really, really have been appreciating them bringing that to this season. And um, I don't know, like, I don't want to say it's refreshing. It's enjoyable. Like, yeah. To see this, to really feel like, you know what you could do with these eight Queens? You could put them on a tour together easily Mm -hmm. and, and charge a nice, penny for, and and people would pay pay yeah. Yeah. to go see the eight of them together doing shtick whatever whatever it may be mm-hmm. yes they all have very different strengths but yes 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 like something they, very yeah there is something very appealing about this season yeah and about these girls that they kind of come together this is a very well cast season Yes, and I will say this, like, the Vivian has absolutely, in my mind, proven, like, she is a queen. Like, yes. um, I've seen some of the episodes from the first season of Drag UK, but that was only because I was visiting someone who was already watching it. 
so like <laughs> they were catching me up there. Well, this is so and so, this is so and so, blah blah blah. And so like it was very interesting to see. I did not see the snatch game with the Donald Trump impersonation, but I did see mm. some other things, and I was like, yeah, she's she's definitely, um, you know got got some some good stuff going on and, and she's definitely proving it and i've really very much appreciated that um you know i mean just look at what she brought to the runway right and you know the um i can't remember what the category was in what they what did they call it a justice um oh. I mean, it was spikes but oh i can't remember the title they gave it um let me look at my nose because we had the pleasure no it, the it was actually principle. just it was just actually just called spikes on the runway Oh, spikes on the runway. Okay, I couldn't remember. I was like, it's got to be something. Like I thought there was a pun. Um, nope, not with this it. time. <laughs> right, but I mean, the Vivian coming out in that outfit. Right. The moment she turned the corner, I was like, she won. <laughs> I was like, she won. She won. She won I mean, the runway you're category. Wrong. You're not wrong, Mama. Who who <laughs> would think? I I wouldn't necessarily think of a light powder baby blue, like outfit with gold spikes all over it looking like hell razors like you know uh masturbatory porn fantasy i mean like girl did you get did you did you clock the heels mm -hmm. the little the, the spike at the bottom at the back yep that yep. that bitch thought about a lot with that outfit i was like that mm -hmm. that 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 right there mm -hmm. with the cross on top i mean it was just it was something yeah. else and i was like so so proud like i was like yes she authentically deserves to be here not that not that i think i i i doubted it but i have some feelings some other people were kind of like what's she doing here right well you know and she's from a non-us version uh yeah. so yeah which by the well, way as a side note over memorial day weekend when i was visiting friends we were having this discussion about the naming convention of all the seasons and i figured out something specific so in the RuPaul's Drag Race Pantheon, RuPaul's, that phrase is only in front of the U.S. and the U.K., and that is because RuPaul has hosted on those two. Okay. All the others are just Drag Race, like Drag Race Thailand, Drag Race España, Drag Race Italia, Drag Race Holland, Drag, Drag Race, Race Canada, Canada, because she's not on it. And the person who brought this up to me was like, why Why are they not all RuPaul's Drag Race Canada or whatever? Or Canada Drag Race or, you know. And I was like, and I said immediately, I was like, I think it's money. I think it's because you have to pay for that mm. name, that like licensing, that whatever. And then I went and I looked on the Wikipedia that we use from the fan base. And I was like, yep, the US and the UK are the only two that her names are on. Now, I don't know if that means for the future of an all winners, all stars that's an that's a vote of contention mm. i would like it to not be necessarily but yeah. that it would be it'll be interesting it'll be interesting to see right uh, if they're gonna do a full-on like i would i could see them doing a um i don't want to say drag race us versus or rupaul's drag race versus the world which is kind of a you know, they well, did they that in did the UK. That. They yeah. did UK one, though. Right. I'm talking like America versus they bring them here. As an example. Right. I, I think it would be interesting if they did an international winners. Yeah. I would love them to put the international queens against each other. Right. Right. Um, winners or whatever. Um, an international all stars. Let me put it like that. Okay. Separate from the all stars are part of the all stars, but do not have any u.s queens on it right right yeah i think that would be interesting so yeah i know i definitely think that the queens are bringing it um this particular season like there's just there hasn't been many moments where i'm like huh like what are you what are you doing fair, fair. um fair. Well, so yeah get to that in a second but... eye rolls <laughs> david yeah. your thoughts um so i am giving some eye rolls unfortunately to my girl Shay mm -hmm. and her spiky look. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't call that a spiky look. Um, I just calling it what it is. Hold on. <laughs> I guess the question begs, what would you call it then? If you don't call it spiky. Hold on. Where's that? Think it starts with mama? 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> Mama, this is garbage. Girl. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love Shay. I love Shay. I don't know where in your head you were thinking this was going. Mm. I don't get it. You mentioned Blue Martian, some kind of alien kind of thing. I don't get that. I didn't get that. Let me put it like that. And while I appreciate like the, the little like antennae that you made with hair and everything, you could not walk in it. It was super, super tight. Yeah, like <sighs> – uh, the, yeah, uh, I agree with you. The part I had the most difficulty with was with that train. Yes, I'm getting to that. Okay. <laughs> right. You wore this like blue thing that he had black gloves. I'm sure you could have found some like something to make the gloves out of because that just didn't make sense. This it was so disjointed that I couldn't quite figure out like what was the point of the disjointedness. Mm hmm. And then obviously you couldn't walk in it. And then we get to the train, which is kind of the main thing you have for the quote unquote spikes. And there's this long train with these spikes that don't stay up. Mm -hmm. They literally don't stay up. Right. They just are there. They drag along with the, with the train and they kind of fall over and all this other stuff. And I, again, kind of like what you talked about, I am super fucking surprised that the judges didn't clock her on it. Mm hmm Because this was a fail to me. This was not good. This did not meet the challenge. It felt like an afterthought. That's fair. Is what this outfit kind of felt like. And I expected a lot more from Shay. Um, but she has done this before where she kind of gets, I think I'll be blunt. She gets in her head about a look and she becomes, go back to kind of art school and shit. And it becomes this very conceptual thing that you really have to like, honestly talk about and give like a paragraph or des to describe it. And did you maybe get it? Right. I don't have time for that. <laughs> So I need to understand what is going on here right then and there. If you had done something like on this, like you had like this, I think you had something on the, um, over your shoulders, some epaulets or something. If you had done something there, some spikiness there, if you had put on your ears like these additional spikes that kind of went back to kind of give you that more alien look, you had worn fucking like black or blue like full on sclera and I like contacts to kind of give that like alien effect. Okay, I could have I could see where you're going. Right. Um done something with the glove. If you had made your glove like a nail glove and made the like nails like super long and spiky and done something with that, I again I would have gotten more of a spikiness to it that I got here. Mm -hmm. And it just, it just didn't, it didn't work. It didn't work for me. I didn't like it. It just, mm. Mm -mm. what I find interesting is while you're talking and I'm listening to you, I'm attempting to look for a picture of this outfit online and I can't find it. Mm. And that's kind of revealing because anything else of hers that was a look can easily be found. Hmm. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, I, I agree. That is... Maybe something happened. We're not aware of it. Maybe there yeah. was an issue. Maybe she had to throw that together at the last minute. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. Just, it was garbage, and, I'm, and I, I, just, I did not like it. it. It was a sour note for me, mm -hmm. um, especially considering what she's done these first kind of few episodes. No, I agree. Having said that, Gary. Well, it, it kind of ties in with yours. I was like, what the fuck was that? AKA the styling failure. There's been a there's been a couple of them in weird ways. Mm -hmm. So like we talked about how I wasn't a fan of Evie Oddly's spike look. Mm -hmm. I don't hate it, 
I think it's pretty neat. I do think it's very like artistic and avant-garde and different, and yet not quite meeting the prompt, according no, to what was event. announced. Mm. Um, and this goes back to Evie again. The fan of white realness. Girl. The big orange afro? Well. With the borrowed pageant dress thing? With the sheer? Like, and all everyone kept saying was, like, she looks like Ariel. I was like, she doesn't look like Ariel. I don't know what she looks like. But, she, like, she it, doesn't, it, she doesn't give me the epitome of Vanna at all. And at again, all. there's a question about what was the prompt. Right, like, like it was, was it, it was, was it, it game show hostess? Right. But it can't it be because Raja nailed Vanna White and then put up online a side by side of her replicating a classic eighties vintage exact Vanna White look. So is okay. this back to production and their shenanigans like that Shay might have mm -hmm. been revealing that what, yeah. what, what someone was told wasn't exactly 100%? Yeah, as according to, again, so you pointed out that, that wonderful you know tweet from Shay, Evie responded and kind of said, girl, I was told the opposite. Correct. Yes, I was told that you could, use, like, please use a celebrity. Don't use some fantastical, like, whatever or generality kind of thing. Hence, we get Cardi B. Arthur, which yeah. I will admit, girl, I was not ready for that. Mm -mm. But, like, like that's, that's that's what's so weird, right? Like, so she gets that, and she really nails it. Uh-huh. The before and after. But the Vanna right. White thing? No, no, ma'am. Yeah. The, the, there's just something, there's something weird about this moment, these moments. And that's what, again, where it makes me wonder where, what were some queens given and were they all given the same thing? Because right. it seems like to right now, they weren't. I would agree. Like it, it appears that they're not being given the same information. For what to put out there so um i'm also gonna i'm gonna uh oh i'm gonna be brave i'm gonna loop trinity in that for this for this most recent episode oh uh so if i'm going to kill a vampire what am i going to stab them with a spike no a stake a stake right you stake them through the heart with a wooden stake like it's not a spike Steak. Not the same thing. Steak. So Trinity, was it beautiful? Absolutely. It was very, very well done. It also Ooh, was uh -huh. evocative of like going out at Halloween. I'm just saying. Like I think I could see a local drag queen pulling that out for, for the Halloween contest, like costume contest to win a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or whatever. I'm just saying. So and I, so I was like, huh? I was like, okay, mm. that's that's a thing, but yeah, it not just a was thing. something. It was something odd. It was again, like, oh gosh, was it? Maybe okay. So I'm I'm kind, I'm not gonna I'm not justifying anyone in the production team, but I always wonder if they maybe say multiple kind of things that are under the same prompt, like. Mm. Spikes, y'all. Stakes, you know, sticks, insects, whatever, animals, spikiness, give us some kind of like, you know, blah, blah, blah kind of thing. The, the realness of Fortune Ball, they say Vanna White realness, mm -hmm. what they meant was... I wasn't going to say showgirl, but like, because if I'm remembering when, when Rue announced the t category, she said something about give us your best, like, game show model, something like that. I think is what she said. I can't remember now. But it was something along those lines of like, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm genuinely surprised that we got a lot of, like, Vanna's. Well, right. So that's where I'm I'm starting to think 
This is pure speculation but, and conjecture. Allegedly, production is not telling the same thing to the same queens. So maybe mm-hmm. they pulled. Maybe that's what happened to Trinity. Maybe yeah. they didn't quite tell her the same thing as the other queens. Yeah, which held her back and, this week. And again, when you think about like the Vera White realness ball, you get. I'm going to kind of point this out. Evie and uh, Shay did more interpretation. Mm-hmm. Like Shay was, she mentioned in her thing, she's like a, she's, she's been away dipped in chocolate. It's kind of what she said, it, if I remember correctly. But it was something along those lines of like, you know, maybe, you know, she was more of an African-American, you know, show girl or whatever you want to use. Um, and you had Evie's that was, okay, I, I'm going to, okay, never mind. I'm going to, with Evie, I think Evie was a throwaway. This was Evie was this was just a fucking throwaway. She was like, I ain't got nothing, so I'm gonna do this. I I, I think I'm willing to go this far. I'm thinking she might have gotten the prompt of a uh, game show, like hostess, hostess or model. Yeah, Mo- hostess slash model. Like because yeah. she kind of strikes me, even though it isn't perfect. She kind of strikes me as like one of the Bob Barker beauties from the Price is Right, kind of like, mm-hmm. I'm just here to look mm-hmm. pretty, like, kind of, I don't know. Like, I mean, it was just, it was so weird that it was off to me. That, yeah. Compared nah, to, nah. like, what the fuck Raja did. I was like, wait, what? I was like, uh, I was so confused. So that's where I'm yeah. like, these these styling things, I'm like, mm, I'm not sure what the whole story is there. Yeah. I feel like there, there might be more to it. And makes good television, because we're talking about it. So. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we'll see. We'll find out. All right. Anything else before we wrap up? Mm-mm. So, uh, yeah, like, tell us what your thoughts are. You know, last so uh, you know, last episode, David dropped this bomb on me about you know uh, <laughs> a queen throwing the patch, so to speak, intentionally, um, as a as a strategic plan kind of move thing, um. And I, you know, kind of wonder if that happened again. This very last lip sync. No. I wonder if somebody held back just a little bit to let somebody else win and let them be the bad guy, the bad girl, the bad queen that has to block Mm. somebody else. I'm waiting. There was so something was mentioned in Untucked that made not Untucked, not Untucked. Pit stop. Okay. It makes you wonder if it, not that so much, but that someone got pissed the fuck off because. Um, okay, so in the if so this was Vivian and James. Mm-hmm. Was the lip sync? Was the lip sync? At a certain point, Jinx is over. Oh here. right, right, right! The shenanigans. Yeah. That yeah. shit. Over here, and then Viv is right here. Viv's, and they go Viv is the... next is uh, stage left. Yeah. So she's next to the seated queens, and I think it's Jada. Yeah, Jada gets up off of her chair and hands to the Vivian a little toy xylophone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the Vivian uses that prop to go with During her. The... So and... if you note know the song that they're doing, the the um, love will say today, Whitney Houston iconic moment there's a there's a there's basically a kind of like xylophone moment in this song mm-hmm. like the the dance break or whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. and it just i mean it was it was beautiful it was classic it was a great moment but it was just like according to bob the drag queen mm-hmm. and nasha mm-hmm. um jinx was furious Right. They think they said, and, and you're right, I, I forgot about that, but you're totally accurate that they brought up that Jinx was really upset about that because it basically looks like they're gunning for her. Mm-hmm. Like they're plotting against her. They're kind of grouping together to make her not win. But I guess the part that bothers me about that is like the only thing she wasn't going to win was 10,000. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a, she's already not getting a star. Correct. So I don't know. It's very interesting. It's a, it's a thought. It's a thought. You know, I, again, I, know. I don't know. I know. We'll find out. We'll find out. We'll, we'll see if we that, like, if it, if it gets ugly, it, like, in the next episode or two. I think when we get to episode six, 
we're going to see some stuff that might come up. Um, some mm-hmm. one of the queens and one of the confessional moments kind of made a comment about like we're waiting for the next twist. Like it's just never not mm-hmm. a thing. Now I'm wondering if Monet is going to drop the bomb in the beginning of this next episode about the bullshit story about the power of the plunger or mm. if she's going to play into that. Mm. I don't know yet. Well, we already know she ain't happy. I think she's giving good TV. I think, I think I that's what that she's doing. Right. I think that's what she loves to do. I think she's giving good TV. That's what I think that is. But let us know your thoughts. There are several ways you can contact or let us know. You can go to our website, uh, go to CubsOutLoud.com. You can, uh, comment on our post on there for this particular episode you can also send us an email it comes out loud at gmail.com or you could just give us a phone call we would be happy to take your voicemail you can call 361-265-8255 that's 361 C O L talk uh you can leave us a voicemail and you we don't have to play it on the show you can tell us at the very beginning like you know i, I just have a thought i want to share it but you don't have to play it and then we'll just discuss it uh, on our social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, basically type in Cubs Out Loud, um, and you would find our stuff on there. Social chat stuff. So uh, there's a program platform called Telegram. And if you go to tinyurl.com backslash telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R, you can join the Drag Race conversation on there. Um, we basically talk about anything that was related to the Drag Race universe, including the current season. Yes. What? What are we? I can't quite see what I'm supposed to be looking at. It's a little blurry. <laughs> oh, the reading thing? That I shared? I can't hear you. You're muted. <laughs> I was trying to talk, and I was saying things, and you didn't hear me. So this is the, this is the COL Drag Race um, Telegram. Right, what David's holding up on his cell phone for his camera. Uh, so we basically I'm share links, me. comments, um, things that are going on uh, within that. <laughs> oh, I shared that screenshot of what Maddie Morphus has said. Girl. <laughs> I was like, these queens be queening. <laughs> Anyways, that's those are examples of what you could uh, get in that particular chat group. Um, yeah. If you want to know when we're going to be live with our regular show, uh, which will be happening momentarily after we finish recording this, um, for the regular series, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash calendar hyphen col. If you would like to support us, there's several ways to do that. You can go to zazzle.com slash cubs out loud, where we have various uh, items of merch accoutrement that you can get. As Damon is feeling himself up, uh, both of us are wearing <laughs> the Cubs Out Loud Consent is by Four Play shirts. These are in the drag pride colors with a lovely navy blue background um, and then it has white, pink, and blue on it and a crown. You can uh, pick whatever shirts you want. Yes, you can pick different colors of shirts. And then we also have mugs. Uh, we got a purse. We get all sorts of things um, to choose from that has the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race <laughs> emblem on it. <laughs> um, Shit. That's all right. Uh, if you would like to, you can become a patron. You can go to Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Cubs Out Loud. And for a dollar or more a month, you can uh, get exclusive access to uh, the full versions of our show. So we do a pre and a post show kind of thing. Uh, we basically bookend everything. So what goes out to the public is just the main show. Um, but mm. there's also links not only to the audio, but there's also video um, of what we're doing that goes over to YouTube uh, that includes yeah, some of that stuff as well. Places. Um, pretty faces <laughs> or if you just want to tip us you want to uh, make a donation it comes out loud we'd be happy you can go to paypal.me slash comes out loud for a one-time donation <laughs> david's doing his best impression of a popper over there Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah you can uh make a one-time donation over there that would be great if you want to help uh, promote Cubs Out Loud, you can raise on iTunes. Go basically anywhere that your podcasts are available. The Cubs Out Loud Drag Race podcast that you may be listening to has its own feed um, that is separate from the uh, regular Cubs Out Loud series. So if you just want to Drag Race stuff, you can do that. Um, and that's also uh, available via Patreon uh, as well if you are a part of that. Mr. Damon, where would people find you to get in touch with you online? Well, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at, on most bear related sites or Facebook as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Facebook. Facebook. Twitter. Um, the Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Um, pup umbra, P U P underscore umbra, U M B R A. 
Yeah. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel73. Um, I do have a Twitter specifically for all things drag. So it's Gabriel73 D R A G. And with that, we want to thank you for joining us uh, today. And we look forward to talking to you in a couple more weeks when we have episodes five and six under our belts. Ooh. <laughs>